Hey, welcome everybody to Battle Pirates Crib. Um, we'll talk about pillage, I guess, and we'll talk about what in, anybody learned out there from uh, our little preview of the upcoming raid mechanics. Uh, hey, uh, Kenny. Hello, hello. Lady Cat. Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> Right, Magic Mike. Don't say hi. it four times. Hi, hi, hi. <laughs> okay, alrighty. And Derpy. I'm not expecting anything to happen next week. Uh oh. Anything to happen? Uh oh. I think is uh. Did didn't Tinder go offline? Oh, well. A lot of people uh, aren't these days. <laughs> I see. Okay. <laughs> He's busy swiping. And KB. Hello, hello. <laughs> hello. So uh, let's get uh, some of the schedule stuff out of the way and we'll move on. Uh, we can skip this. Um, next week is the raid. And uh, we have some expectations for a uh, update on the rules of engagement, the uh, PvP rule changes which we shouldn't expect out, I think, for a couple of more weeks after that. And uh, one more click. Same old stuff as Wednesday. I just want to make sure everybody's aware of, of all this stuff. So, um, But this VXP will be a good time to get some Defender tokens if uh, people have uh, spent a bunch uh with their gatekeepers, so time to stock back up because uh, your zealot should be uh, running pretty well at that point in time, hopefully. And uh, I don't know, is there anything uh, exciting in the either one of these calendars that anybody wants to talk about? Alrighty, um, let's move on to the next one then. All right, BP next week. Uh, Toll for the ter ferryman and beyond the breach. The toll for the ferryman was. Anybody recall? Give me one minute. Okay. I'm Googling. You know, because I remember when it came out, but I forgot what it was because they they combined it with another one, and they both meant basically you needed to pay. And I thought that was. Uh, you mean you uh, needed to pay coin repairs? Well, the, the, a toll for the ferry, ferryman is basically oh, you, have, I, okay. uh, you have a coin underneath your right, yeah. right. That's what you meant. <laughs> okay, mm -hmm. a literary reference. I should have known. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and we're going to get uh, X1 upgrades, which I know everybody's. Uh, curious what they may be because uh, U1 through U3 is uh, I think as uh, Brian said last week was uh, uh, um, no he was talking about the flag as being weak sauce but I think the uh, U1 through U3 is not as exciting as what we've seen historically yeah definitely not as exciting as the Punisher targets yeah so and we get the Punisher new upgrades yeah, and new Kuros battery two, and the mongoose heavy turret for your base. So, um, all right. Um, anything else? Okay. I think a toll for the ferryman might be for breachers. Okay, so two because we have beyond the breach, which I know is for breachers. I know you you, you uh, it's assault ships in the toll for the ferryman Saturn and Nemesis X. Mm -hmm. Not hundred percent sure what the prizes are. Um, okay. It is. Oh, here we go. Carnage and Gorgon. You get Carnage and, Gor and Gorgon. So it's the Defender Defender TLC. Okay. Um, you get some. Car, some VXP tokens and uh, some build tokens for those defenders. So if you still, if those are still useful to you, building gorgons are useful to you in the game. Then I guess this is for you. Or the carnage. I think the carnage is going to be 
potentially a more interesting defender hall once they put rules of engagement in unless it's already like past its prime you know once rules of engagement kick in um you won't be able to prep out guards so it might have a more interesting use at that point in time so because you said the uh, carnage uh was also in there right yep yeah and that has a very extremely long build time so uh, ben wants to know what fleet is needed for, I guess, uh, a toll for the ferryman. You said that's assault. Yeah, you can yeah. do it with as low as Saturn's and Nemesis X, although I, you probably just put your Zelts in there on auto and take almost nothing. Yeah. Okay. All righty. Um, let's see. What should we talk about next? Should we talk about pillage or should we talk about what we learned in the... Uh, uh, the experimental 24 hours uh, as far as the mechanics go of the uh, yeah that's burning and derpy so I can tell let's talk about that already. <laughs> okay well let's see uh, we still have the slides from last week uh, should we uh, you want to go through those if you want to just go to uh, uh, slide 7 and uh, we can go through if there's any interesting points associated with any one of these. Uh, PT boat, uh, formerly called the Apollo, which gets launched out of the, uh, oh, damn it, I forgot the name of it. The uh, War Warbird Mothership. Yeah, or Carrier, yeah. Um, five at a time good for getting up your uh, frenzy with your uh, your flagship um, goes down easy you can pretty much one shot them with your zealot fleet so that's they're really nice for building up frenzy for your uh, for your flagship okay so I'll keep that one in mind and uh, anything else on the PT boat let's go to the next one then Atlas Carrier, um, I watched your video, um, especially the 101 video, uh, long range penetrative missiles. Um, you, because of the, the appearance of the missiles, thought they might be corrosive, but the word penetrative implies the damage type. Yeah, I'm not... I'm not sure. Um, I guess I should have done one test, just isolated that thing. Um, but it, it's probably penetrative damage. Um, but they they do look like corrosive. I mean, there's you know they yeah, have a green aura to them, and <clears throat> I understand where you were coming from with that. But it's uh, you know I guess we'll at Here's some point. A, let me share my screen. I'm replaying it. We, these targets aren't in the game anymore. I just hit that. Um, okay. Here's the here's a just going through the target, the Atlas carrier right here. I don't know how useful this will be, but um, we're seeing right here. There's it fires a corrosive thing that outranges you, and then also fires some missiles. Okay, I see the that. missiles. So you see something out. I see the. What look like missiles to me, right? You know, like there's two of them out there now. Is there yeah. something else I'm not seeing? Let me see if I can. Yeah, right. It just just went there. It's okay. It's fast. Whatever it is, it's fast, it. right? Okay. Yeah. This comes out really quick. Right there, you can yeah. see it under the halo. Oh, okay, right okay, okay. And Close those were that ranges you, and then scatter guns, and then some missiles that come from it. Which yeah, because it's supposed to have a close target. range corrosive scatter gun. So I guess close is different than um, short range or very short range. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so I guess close <laughs> outranges you, but short and very short don't. Okay. That's what I'd like uh, some clarification on. But yeah, yeah. somebody yeah. get a ruler. Yeah. Put a measure and tape out. It shot before I did, so. Yeah, yeah. So that's that's interesting. Um, 
And uh, one of the questions in your video, your your ship build only has uh, one ship with uh, countermeasure loaders four. Uh, it does extremely well, um, almost you know, appears to be a hundred percent efficiency in regards to um, stopping the Sentinel. Um, do you have any opinion or um, <clears throat> information regarding um, how it, how the Atlas missiles, or were you getting, do you think you needed more or would one ship, basically, would one ship with two MDS uh, threes and countermeasure four appear to cover all our needs, at least at this point with these sort of preview targets? I feel like one ship might not be enough, but I I don't really have any evidence to back that up. It's more just a gut feeling. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, it worked great against that. Yeah, yeah. The only yeah the only question I had was with the Atlas because they were definitely coming through, um, but it was hard to tell if it was. Uh, it doesn't appear to be an overload situation. It, it appears to be more of a flak of aid situation. Yeah, I would agree with your assessment there. Um, personally, I think I'm still planning for two countermeasure loaders, but you might be right that you just need one on the fleet. Yeah, I'm just, I'm still trying to work out my build in my head. So, okay. Um, should we uh, go back to the slides and get to something? Uh, or is there something else you want to... Uh, that's show enough here. from uh, for the Atlas carrier, unless something else comes up, but I can pull up the Warbird or something like that. Okay, alrighty. Um, any more questions or uh, comments on the uh, Atlas carrier? Okay. Um, so close is longer than short, just so you know. <laughs> alrighty. Um, if no more, we'll go to. Uh, Go to the next slide. Warbird Mothership. Um, short range, low damage, corrosive scatter guns. Very short range, high damage, corrosive scatter guns. Um, but this is what the one that launches the PT boats. High in armor. Um, slow combat and turn seed. And sometimes it doesn't even appear to move. So. Um, any thoughts on this one? Um, Is it the same range as our ships? Our ships are short range, right? Well, it. Uh, uh, I have the video up for this one if you want to switch to, to my screen real quick. Um, okay. You can see that it's going to it's gonna fire. Uh, I think it's shooting before I am. Yeah, right there. You, if you if your eyes are really good, there's some yellow stuff right by my mouse, so it outranges you. So we have very short range scatter guns. Maybe in between very short range and short range. Yeah. Social distancing. Um. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. Oh, is it going again though? Okay, but it seems to have a low reload time because are you seeing that yellow thing again? Well, yeah, it's sort of hard it, to tell. It was yeah. shooting at me. It, it does have okay, lower load time. Okay. Because I'm not seeing it uh, pop up again. And then there's... Uh, well, you, let, let, let's stay here for a second as far as your... Because the other thing... Um, I'm going to switch over to the other slide. So we can, I think the Valkyrie is going to come up soon. Um, and you, you seem to be... Uh, in a good spot to talk about the Valkyrie. So let's go through those stats again. Um, let's go ahead one, uh, Lady Cat. Okay, the spotlight is the the orange rings that you were just seeing. Just You don't need to go all the way forward. Just stay with the spotlight so we can... Uh, it does uh, penetrative damage um, and easily avoidable with skillful driving. Now, uh, um, now you can go ahead. Accidents will happen. Yes, yes. Um, no, no, it's you know. No, I, I, I'm just 
we were talking about the Valkyrie. It made sense. Uh, short range corrosive scatter guns. Um, I know at one point, I, I don't know which video, but you were running them over. Did you notice? Uh, um, well, let, let, let's go and uh, see the example of the, uh, the Valkyrie. I'm, I'm back over to you, Derpy, and where mm -hmm. we can see how the spotlights are working. Um, did you actually see the? Because I know at some point you're just you do you're just running over the Valkyries. Did you notice them fire? Yeah, it just did right there. Okay. Um, just, let me go back. Looks like I fired first, so it looks like you outranged those things. Okay, so um, alrighty. So uh, short range may not be the sh the short range may not be a consistent number. I don't think it is. Okay. So maybe they have like short and shortish, very <laughs> shortish. But... Yeah, it's not very. Uh... <laughs> yeah. Hold on. At the very beginning, they were about. And I was noticing some more weird behavior with the auras and the and the lands and the turrets, and it didn't. It seemed to almost appear to get stuck up on it sometimes. Yeah, we noticed that on the Wednesday show when you and um, Kenny were running through them, because it seemed to be more when there was a uh, when a turret was there that it would get stuck uh, or slow down. Um, yeah. I don't know if we were imagining that or. No, I had it happen to me too when I was mucking around with them. It's, it seems like when they start to follow you, if you're around the other side of a an island that they sometimes will beach up against the, the land. Yeah, like that one. Like it is there. at the moment, yeah. And, well, maybe they'll be better tuned out on the raid targets because they'll follow a set path. So maybe it won't hit the land. It'll just go in donuts or something. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm um, going to switch over, and I don't, I can't recall what's next. Uh, Lady Cat, let's see what's the next one. Sentinel turret. Um, I'm going to do the... Uh, yeah, yeah, you have a good demonstration at the beginning of uh, this is the 107 video. I know you do at the beginning. I think you have it in both videos, but in the 101 video, um, you have a good demo as far as how uh, a zealot with uh, um, yeah, this is the one with countermeasure so move four. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so this one right here, I'm saying. Kind of measure loaders four shoots down all the missiles from the sentinel turrets. But if I move that one away and hide it behind everything, see right mm -hmm. now it's in range. It shoots first, knocks all four of them down easily. Mm -hmm. If I move that the good one away um, behind everything else, the sentinel turret, you can see it's going to shoot. It's going to get through. Um, it has some. My accuracy is not good enough with the anti-missiles, so it gets through and might hit you sometimes, but you can also evade it. Yeah, it looks like about half of them get shot down without the... Yeah. You know, like fifty, that. Somewhere around there, 50% versus 100%. Um, so that's uh, something to keep in mind. Um, okay. Um, all righty. Let's uh, back over on you, Lady Cat. Let's uh, see the next one. Venom turret, I, I, which appeared to be your uh, your arch nemesis there. Yeah, I'm, I'm bad at driving against them. <laughs> <laughs> they seem to. Uh, you're doing okay here. Yeah, but you, you can you can outrange them. They're short range and can be outranged. I range it fine, and then um, if I skip forward to Alex Carrier's dead and. It uh, it's really difficult to sometimes for me at least first time hitting this thing to 
I hear I did fine um, to outrange them. Yeah, it's um, yeah, this one I, I drove by on purpose, and you saw yeah. it missed me just a little bit because if you keep moving, but uh, they're they're tricky to outrange. It's not as easy as in the uh, Pegasus targets outranging that short scatter gun. It's harder in this in this case. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you also mentioned um, putting on something if you wanted to auto or I know we did it at times with uh, oh, what was the uh, oh, it was it was a it was sort of oh. a messed up raid where you could put on the concussive Gatling gun and you would stop it right because yeah. <clears throat> there's a 5% difference. Um, it was put in early in the game that if you have, let's say you have a range of 100, um, your ship, when it attacks anything, will come to 95. Um, there's a 5% difference. And that was put in place for autoing ships and things of that nature. That's why it was put in. But you could put in something that's uh um you know in the instance of the concussive gatling gun just had a little you know two or three more range and it would stop and allow you to auto um i don't know i mean i'm sure there's something with a range of 64 63 something like that or just over this range that might allow you to either auto or push the S button for a second on certain things, but you are losing a, a weapon spot in that instance, but it's hard to tell because um, eight scatter guns put you overweight, and it sort of appears that you might only need two MDS-3s uh, if you have the right specials. So I, I don't know. I'm just sort of throwing that out there, but uh, um, yeah, I'd, I'd love someone to test that thing in the raid, just like I'd love someone to test uh, D5 EV armor in the raid. Okay. Alrighty. Um, so, uh, yeah, the, venom, the, the uh, venom turret, you need to uh, stop, and uh, yeah, you'll, uh, where you'll get shot at and take some damage. So let's, uh, let's move on to the next one. All right, here's a tricky one. The coaxial halo turret. Um, you also did a pretty good demo on that one. If you uh, let me know when you get to that. Um, yeah, I think I have it right away, right about here. Okay, because it can't be countered. Um, evade does work, and always tar targets the ship with the highest health. And uh, okay, I'm back to you, uh, Derpy. So right here, it's shooting at me. You see, my retreat button didn't change that last one that hit, but this one it did change. Mm -hmm. That one it didn't change again. That one didn't change. And um, so it, you, it can miss your ships, which was something we missed in the beginning, or I missed in the beginning. Um, and do you have do you have a, a guidance scrambler or agility four on all five of your or all five of your ships at this point, or no? Not yet. I think I have it on three ships. Okay, okay. And, oh, here we go. Here's the spot I'm looking for. Oh, right here you can that. see this missile. It isn't shooting at the closest ship. It's shooting at the back four. Mm -hmm. One of those in the back four. And when that one goes down in health, that was, that was too early. Anyway, the one on the right here is what you want to watch because both ships are in range of it. It shoots at my flagship sometimes, and at the one of the other ones sometimes too. When the flagship's health is no longer the the highest, so if you shot at the back one, it's going to shoot at the back one again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and just so everybody knows that. Okay, there you go. You're showing it now. But that that the uh, halo on the far left is uh, out of range of your back ship. So. And that's that's a really really interesting mechanic in this target. Um, probably the biggest takeaway I have from this entire in, entire preview raid strategy, whatever. 
Yeah, what does everybody think about this mechanic? Probably it makes, takes away. What? Go ahead, KB. Uh, probably makes it so such that you're not going to get a lot of instant repairs. <laughs> I wouldn't have thought because it's going to even the damage right out, isn't it? So you're wow. not going to. Well, I don't so know about instead it. Instead of taking instead of taking uh, 25 minutes damage on one ship, you're taking five minutes spread out to each one. Which is not a bad thing. That this would is be terrible. better. Well, it depends. Well, this is, it depends. See, yeah, it doesn't allow you to build. It doesn't allow you to build a uh, a fleet where, like, it doesn't allow you to really build a tank. That's what I was just uh, going to say. Is it meant to? Yeah, uh, you'd have to play around with the armors to to do something. Maybe if you had an extra high evade ship with the right armor. That well, see that ship could get hurt but by it, a thing. So yeah, eventually it's going to eat away whatever whatever method you use to bump up one ship. It'll eat away at it until right. such a time as they're all the same anyway. Yeah, yeah. So it just makes it just makes sure that uh, there's going to be more damage probably. Yeah, and it is sort of unavoidable. Yeah, I don't, I, I, I don't know what I think about it. I mean, it's it does remove some some amount of strategy from the game in regards that you can't build a an effective tank because they all need to be pretty much evade wise and defense wise need to be the same because if this weapon is doing a lot of damage. It's just going to move on to the next ship. Um, I, 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 you know, I, I don't know. Personally, the way I play the game, I'm not a fan of it. Because um, I would rather, I would rather um, be able to um, create some sort of tank, drive it a certain way. Um, this seems to be something that's better for somebody like all right, let's stack them all up and smash them shit up is the way I the way I look at this mechanic. This is the first time, well, they said this is the mechanic on the heavy the heavy launcher, the heavy tempest launcher. Um, it's a similar mechanic, which is, you know, sort of different in the in the uh, PVP base hitting world, but you know, the fact that uh, you know, Derpy's got even damage across means that it, it's probably doing pretty significant damage in order to even everything out. Yeah, well, that's that's what I was getting at with the uh, comment that there won't be any instant repair in base. Because it's going to take big chunks out of, out of anything that uh, happens to avoid avoid getting hit for a little while. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and it sort of flattens the, not flattens the curve, but flattens out what your builds are going to be defensively. Um, and so you can't create um, specialist ships, um, at least in, in regards to defense. Oh, so they, it's their COVID strategy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, they're flattening our curves, they're flattening our, our tanks. Yeah, I don't like it because it can't be countered. Or because it's a smart missile, you, it's not dumb fire. You just can't drive past it and try to avoid it. So you can't avoid it. You can't counter it. You might be able to evade it. But if you use a lot of evade, you're taking away things, specials that would give you countermeasures for other things or add damage. Add Ken, damage. Yeah. Kenny, Kenny likes it because he can stack again and just drive like a maniac. <laughs> I'm kind of tired. Bad thing. You know, well, actually, it is a bad thing from from a strategy point of view, but it's a good thing from a uh, other points of view. Well, I think it's a good thing if it if you can use skillful driving to avoid it. But I don't think anybody's a fan of unavoidable damage. <clears throat> kind of what I see here. That, that, is, that is my Tinder username. So unavoidable damage. What were you going to say, Derpy? Yes. I was going to say, uh, I'm kind of tired of driving every fleet that we've had for the last uh, however long. 
Yeah. I feel like I've been driving almost every fleet. Praetorians, drive that with a tank. Uh, mm -hmm. Punishers, drive that with the tank. One before that. I'm not sure I redrove rides with the tank, but I like driving stacked um, sometimes. I don't want to drive every single ship every single time with a tank. I just want to be able to group them up and maybe make a little little bit more mistakes, not drive everything as strictly sometimes. I like stacked. <laughs> No well, oh, what a mind. Um, well, 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 we're still not sure how long until Derpy's able to legally drink, but, um, you know, that's the only thing that I see as far as the uh, driving everything stacked. Because um, otherwise, it's, you know, uh, hitting a target where you can drive stacked as opposed to getting maybe 10 or 15% better driving them with a tank or you can you know, drive it, it gives you you know a, a somewhat of an advantage for taking you know that sort of pain in the ass of of driving a tank it's easier wow. to drink and drive if you don't tank <laughs> well if you have a tank driving in front of you and as long as they run out of the cops you're pretty okay yeah true yeah yeah but, you know, it's okay to drive stacked and it's nice for a change to just be able to drive, but you still want to be able to drive well and avoid damage where you can. At least you reward your skill and this is not rewarding your skill. Cause well, well, it's also not, it's also commonizing all the builds, you know, because right. now, you know, if you're forced to build every ship the same, that limits what you're what you're able to do in the game as far as um, um, creative creativity is what people like to call it. So, uh, um, so might as well sell us a complete finished ship instead of just a blueprint. Be done with it. Yeah, I don't know about that, but well, one thing you could do, you could wait till the halo fires at your flagship in range, and then as soon as it fires, you charge in with all five. Mm -hmm. something like this as soon as the one that selected fires you charge in with all five ships maybe you get lucky and avoid a hit or two because your flagship is more evade but then yeah. if it does get hit you're giving up all the aura stacking bonus from the uh, fourth of survival mm -hmm. yeah and right now you're showing a really good example of the minimum range that the uh, the halo does have so yeah, if you can sneak inside of somebody on the minimum range and then move to the next one, <clears throat> you know, that would almost be like, oh, okay, kill it faster and then just get to the next one's minimum range. Might make sense. I don't know. It makes me want drones. <laughs> Send the drones in there. And take <laughs> that would be interesting. <clears throat> If they were allowed on the target, you know, because we have some of those old school drones that would just be like, you know, <laughs> but, but, but those did cause, uh, you did have to repair after those drones died. And I'm assuming just as soon as the Halo missile was launched, they would uh, need repair before they even hit them. So, all right. Um, any more thoughts on the coaxial turret and its, uh, and this, as far as we know, a uh, new mechanic? No, I just hope they make it so that's not always damaging. Yeah, yeah. I think this should be a low damage turret. Yeah. Uh, and it appears to be tuned fairly high at this point. Um, the fact that everybody's evened out on damage is a little worrisome. Um, because in the 101, you were doing it as an example, uh, Terpy. Did you ever just try and hit these at some point? And what was your balance of damage if you were just hitting them and if you did that? I, I didn't test that. Okay, okay. It is, it is kind of a disturbing move towards two things. Cookie cutter builds is becoming more and more obvious every raid almost. And minimum damage, meaning it doesn't matter how you do it, it, there isn't any skill anymore. You just, other than driving into those corrosive turrets, you're going to take 
oh, within five minutes, the same amount of damage as everybody else. <laughs> it's that's a bad. That could be a bad trend. Isn't that a flashback to the hunter killer mortar, whatever the hell that was? Uh, well, that that lasted. I don't even think that made this it through the raid. I think that lasted for like twenty four hours. The hunter. Right. Killer Is this not similar to that, or am I? I don't see this as guaranteed damage. I see it as spreading out the damage you were already going to get. Uh, I, by mean, I don't mean the damage distribution. I mean the fact that it hits you from pretty much everywhere. You're going to take, you're going to take, you're, you're going to take some hits from this thing every time. Yeah. And even though it is evening it out, which actually I like, that part I actually do like, but the fact that you could avoid all the other slow-moving things, but this thing's going to give you damage no matter what. Because there's no driving style that's going to evade it well maybe yeah. maybe not Let, let's uh back up a little bit and i want to say with the reload it do you think um that the devout zealot and overdrive or uh, and frenzy could be able to close that gap with one firing from do you understand what i'm saying with with one missile firing and you hit a tank and then you just boom before it reloads you're inside the minimum range yeah but very rarely there was uh only one shooting at you more often than not there was two or three shooting at you oh that's true that's that's completely true but i'm saying as far as trying to trying to find some way to sort of minimize the damage by um I guess in the opportunity to stay in that little circle to inside the halo's minimum range, if you sit there for any length of time, I, I, you're probably I, I, yeah, other problems. This appears to be at normal time, so it appears that you could, I mean, especially in the frenzy like he is, you could close that gap and get inside the minimum range. But I, I, I agree with everybody that there are, uh, there is the issue that you're going to be fired at by multiples at a time, at least in this target. But it would make it more strategic if uh, something like that, what I was talking about was in place. So, um, so it's going the back. trying to get, get the, um, resource generators first you know you've basically got to come under fire from something to try and knock those over yeah yeah it's a lot of coming from the right angle um the 107 is uh it seems like a more interesting target than the um than the 101 as far as the angle of uh um how you can hit the uh, titanium generator um because you can hit the titanium generator from you don't have to kill a bunch of uh you don't need to kill a bunch of uh, uh venom turrets in order to to get to them they're a little bit mm. more it's a little, a little bit more variable. yeah you know like see that you know like he could come from the back the other ones, you know, the 101s, they're stacked up with Venoms guarding them. So you need to kill the Venoms prior to getting to them. But in the 107s, you you get uh, easier access to the uh, to them. Yeah, this particular island, I could just charge in, park right here where my mouse is, kill the, be inside minimum range of one, maybe two Halos, kill the Titaniums at the same time, maybe splash and kill another of the... Uh, another halo missile and then kill the other one uh, yep. shoot down all the sentinel countermeasures be outside the range of the, of the scatter venom scatter gun mm -hmm. but these are not the final layouts the raid targets won't look like this they should have very very similar mechanics but hopefully the damage will be tuned down even more yeah yeah hopefully but yeah but, but but that's what I was noticing as far as because the the 101 is supposed to be an auto target, and then the 107 is supposed to be your skillful driving, and y you can see some backdoor ways to get to the uh, the titanium extractor at that point or generator. I forget which one. So, all right, uh, let's see. Uh, we're done with the coaxial halo turret. 
we've, I think we've talked out the modified titanium extractor. Uh, all right. Um, what else should we be? Uh, what else should we? Is there anything worth discussing in, gar in regards to pillage? Um, I have about two things. Okay. In terms of prizes, you don't probably need all 10 absolver scatter guns. You only need how many you're going to put on your fleet. Um, so I plan on running 33 weapons total on the fleet. I have 30 already, so I only need three new weapons. Most mm -hmm. people probably want to get five new weapons, something like that. Um, what if I can load it again? VXP tokens? Uh, VXP tokens are good. Um, you no, know, you only need to get two of them. Two. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, that's, okay. yeah. that's what I was okay. bringing up. I think we talked about that on Wednesday. You only need two. There's yeah. some decent PvP stuff. The Decimator turret, or if that's how it is. Uh, some of the other far sites, Hellmouths. I'm going to get three each of those. Replace all my Tempest launchers. Gatekeepers are nice. Um, if you plan on upgrading your Zealots to X1, you um, there's the uh, you should already have some from the first raid or from the TLC or from next time we have this TLC the High Seas Heresy. Mm -hmm. So you probably, I probably already have about four hundred of those, and I didn't even fill up on all from the first raid. But yeah, it really depends um, because. Uh, going from uh, U2 to U3 is the same. Um, well, as far as the normal ones, it's going to be it's it's uh, 60 40, no, 60 30 10. So you need, um, as far as your normal ships, you would need an additional 240 over what you had at U3. So um, I don't recall how many we got in the TLC. Um, if you have extra stuff, I would, you know. Uh, I need nine kits from Pillage to get to U3. Uh, Bull, if, if, is that on your, on your normal? Um, which ship is that? Because that would be interesting if they've, because I've, um, because the VXP they changed for the flag, so I don't know if they changed the upgrades as well. So uh, there, there, you, re okay, re regular zealots. Okay, okay, that makes sense. You mean nine nine kits? You mean nine times ten, or I think he means ninety, which doesn't make sense either. It should be a hundred. It should be sixty, thirty, ten. So, I think it's uh, I think it's a hundred. Although, if, and then if X one comes out, you'll want some more upgrade tokens for X one when that happens next week. Okay. Probably. I think there's more important things to spend other than upgrades. Um, I see these upgrades as mostly optional. Sure, there's some benefit, but you can also just upgrade them next month. Like you, you don't. Have, you shouldn't try and get a full X one feet done before the raid. Well, you know, people do that, so I'm not sure if he's one of those ones that you know, by you know, day one of the raid. I'm already at X one. If you are, that's you know. So. Um, no, I don't what? I'm working on it. What are you working on? Oh, get upgrading? Yep. Okay. Um, go back to the last slide because I need to get a beer. And so uh, I want to discuss this one again. Is there <laughs> anything? Um, well, this is an update, you know, based on lessons learned. But I, I do need to get a beer. Uh, you know, it's been 45 minutes. So, uh, the titanium uh, extractor. We're supposed to talk yeah, about this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, 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 what do you want to talk about? Let's pick one. Bills are a lot more interesting to talk about than that. Well, that's for up, you know, well, I want to hear what you have to say because I have I have thoughts on this too because I'm I'm a little bit uh uh. 
it'd be nice if you got some t titanium when you killed the thing. That'd be a nice little mechanic to throw in there. We'll talk about this while you're gone. Did he leave? <laughs> I think so. <laughs> I don't think he cares what we talk about, but he wanted to wait for you, Derpy. I think he just wanted to talk about builds when, when he was here. Yeah. Okay, here's the weak sauce flagship. Weak sauce. I think a lot of make sure you don't start a flagship. Make sure when you start your devout zealot build, you're actually starting your devout zealot and not a fifth regular one. Otherwise, you'll be sad. Oh, did you do that? Some people have. Oh, I saw God. a couple complaints. They look really similar. Some people also saying, "Hey, it switched on me. I started the the regular one and." I started the flagship and it came out regular. Um, now you probably just started the wrong one because they look almost the same. Sounds yeah, like well they stick side to by side too. In have you have you guys noticed a weird bug where you send a build code and it puts the wrong hull underneath the sh the, the build they send? It puts up whatever you are working on last instead of the build code actually changing the hull. So you could share a a flag, and it can actually show the zealot if that's what you were last building. Is that it's a a bug. HTML there, or Flash or both? Both. It might also it might also just be might be a bug, but it might also also be if you try to share a build when you have a skin equipped, it loads the skin in there. So oh, interesting. Yeah, that would be if still I a bug. Share but... my zealot build with my fire firebrand skin to someone who doesn't have that particular skin. It, it doesn't load in properly. Yeah, so that but might I, be I was I into. was looking at a conqueror and somebody sent okay. a different conqueror and it it kept my conqueror there and then put their specials on top of it. It was like, ah. Uh? Yeah, I have a couple complaints about how the build thing runs. I think you do too. Yeah. Yeah, I have complaints too, but I guess they're focusing on getting HTML done first before they really address some of these other issues. How do you feel about PvP changes coming? Are you ready? I like well, it. I thought I got my base up to standard, but someone got in with 25% on left on a couple of Warhounds earlier today, so I'm, I guess I'm not ready yet. Yeah, I'm not ready. Well, so it's all going to change anyway with the new rules. For we don't know for one how how long someone's going to have to attack your base. That's something that could change, seeing as though you're only going to get one one try at it, so they may extend that time limit to maybe six minutes or something like that. Who knows? And they may extend it longer because it's a gatekeeper and it's overlap. Yeah, well, they've got to, they've got to make it so that the attacker gets... Gets a bit of a chance at it, but hopefully but it's not going to be too far the attacker's way. Yeah, but we don't want to be forced to use gatekeepers either. I like my two and I'm building a third, so... Uh, I'm building my second. I love my first one, but I need a second one. Oh, Hepe's back. What you want to talk about, Hefe? Well, I'm going to go back to the build one and see where we are with the builds. Okay. Um, it changes a lot um, based on what we saw with uh, what Derpy did and this whole preview thing again as far as if we only need to have one if 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 we only need to have one countermeasure special across our fleet um so yeah i'm a little bit more confused by it because then i think evade on every ship does make more sense it's it's i don't and know and what like the battery off of the countermeasure ship off of one I mean, it, it really depends on what Corrosive Battery 2 has in store for us. 
if it has a higher turret survival number that overcomes what we get out of the evade, which I don't know if that's going to be true, um, then I could see, you know, because uh, if we only have to have one special that's, that's lacking. I don't know, does that make sense to anybody? Yeah. Yeah. If it's but, if it's strong enough, then we want to use it on all five. If it's not, maybe you only put it on, maybe run one countermeasure ship. Yeah, yeah. If it works, because we're not, we don't see this. So far, we haven't seen a glut of missiles. I mean, if you have two um, MDS threes, they have a salvo of ten, if I'm correct, and. Um, <clears throat> So you're going to get 20, uh, two at a time at 0.2 seconds each. So um, they're going to come out oh, pretty fast. Hold on. Does one missile defense system three, can that, how many projectiles can just one missile defense system three shoot at a time? Well, it depends on projectile speed, but instantaneously it can only shoot at one. But it comes out every 0.2 seconds, so it depends on your distance. And does it have a salvo of five or ten? Ten. I as well. Um, are you in the game? I'm. I'm think it's ten. Uh, I can check. I'm hitting at one thirty three right now. Mm. Does anybody else want to check? I'll I think try. I'll try. Okay. Yeah, because when I'm hosting this, it's uh, it's difficult to get the game up. Salvo of ten. A reload speed of four point four seven. Okay, 4.47, which is going to get reduced automatically to uh, just with rank, is going to get reduced to 1.1. Uh, um, and then if um, countermeasure loader is 4, I don't know if does that have a reload increase? Uh, doing the math, let's see. Um, well, you do have your alliance bonus for some people in there, which is like 10%, but, mm -hmm. um, yeah, you might, I, I, you might be trying to, you might be about to convince me, um, countermeasure loaders for, where is my ship that has that on there? Countermeasure loaders for has a, um. Anti missile reload. There's there's countermeasure reload, but that doesn't work for uh, anti, anti, anti penetrating. I don't think. Yeah. So there's none. So your reload for one will go down to every one point one seconds. So you're gonna fire twenty, and then you need to have a one point one seconds to fire another twenty. But you know. Those would be sp spaced out every 0. 0.2 seconds. Yeah, um, your uh, your your twenty your twenty projectiles that you or your ten projectiles that you fire from that first one mm -hmm. are going to take are going to take uh, ten times. It's going to take two seconds to fire those all, right? Yes, yes. So, so you you're should be firing for two seconds and then you're doing reloading for four. one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you, you might only need two with that are buffed in any way on one ship, and then four on four or one times four on your on your other four ships just due to weight, in case you happen to get overwhelmed. So yeah, I, I guess I think you you're right. And and again, this really depends on driving and projectile speed of the incoming uh, projectiles, because if you are trying to run over something that's firing missiles at you, you, you know, you don't have that 0.2 seconds. If it's high projectile speed, that also factors in. So yeah, it's, it's hard to tell as far as how many need that special. Um, but it seems like the Sentinel is firing from a, a good distance away, uh, slow projectile speed. You basically had uh, two of them that were firing at, you know, and keeping out how many were there? There was four or five coming out of the Sentinel. Yeah, one of, the, I think, five or six. 
but easily enough to be handled by even one buffed missile defense system three I'd I'd imagine. Well, you had two on that ship, so yeah, yeah, because because the point two seconds is is part of the you know sort of the unknown magic part of it. So okay. All right. Well, uh, that's the case, and you've only got one countermeasure loader four. Um, which other special are you going to put with that? A battery or agility? Uh, probably. Well, see, that's the other tricky part because if it's wants to distribute damage, um, I don't know. I, I know Derpy is going agility. I'm in a toss-up mode with that one because you're going to do more damage, and I could see it either way. Um, yeah, it's it's tough to tell until we get in the midst of it, and we may not really notice a huge difference um, because it uh, corrosive battery one provides thirty percent more corrosive damage, which isn't like you know if you already have three thousand, it doesn't go to three thousand or twenty eight hundred, it goes up to thirty percent of that. It doesn't go up to 28,030. So it, it's a significant boost. And also, it doubles your building damage. So it's. Um, How fast do we need to kill? Well, pretty fast. I answered my own question. So, mm -hmm. how fast we needed to kill turrets? Yeah, I'm thinking. I'm thinking you might be right that we 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 want to keep corrosive battery on our ships if. If possible, and give up the run. on the one ship that has the countermeasure loader for. I, uh, I it's, tricky. Like it's, it's tricky. It's tricky. I mean, I agree. It's tricky. I mean, which one do you? Yeah, it could go either way. Is what I'm saying, and it, I don't think well, it's going to be a huge difference either way either. I think you need both agility and the and the battery. But we just decided we needed one with at least one corrosive, at least one um, countermeasure special. Oh yeah, yeah. But just well, on maybe, one maybe, ship, what, what are you on gonna drop ship, off? I think. What are you going to drop off then? Um, I would probably drop agility off because it's it's probably yeah. not going to make the same difference than what uh, than what, what the battery, battery is because the battery's giving you more damage plus it's giving you turret defense. Yeah, the turret defense is not not wonderful because it's eighteen hundred is a require. Uh, the current battery. Yeah, yeah, the current battery. Yeah, yeah. We don't know what the corrosive battery two is going to be. It's still something, and all all of AIDS given you is is basically a VAID, so yeah. it's it's only going to counter counteract some of the stuff coming at you. It's not going to not going to do it all. So I think that'd be the way I'd lean from yeah, the countermeasure one. Yeah, I, like I said, I can go either way, and again... Particularly uh, given the mechanic of the, the halo missiles in any case, is that it's probably not going to matter what you've got on there, it's still going to take the same damage as the other, the other four ships, isn't it? Well, d d well, it is going to take the same amount of damage, but how many shots is it going to take to get to that damage? Uh, Derpy, you have a good video to show. You know, I, I think we already showed it, but yeah. basically, but basically, it appears that about uh, with your your right around sixty six of aid, something like that. I'm yeah. Um, and you and it appears that so if you if you have evade on one ship, the damage across your whole fleet is going to be dropped. It's going to be lower. Mm -hmm. That's how this mechanic works. So evade crews get to help in this right too. Yes. Yeah, evade crews will help. Um, although there are other options. Yeah, splash crews. There's a lot of options out there. Even still, you know, there's a lot of options. Right. Well, I'm sorry, I said steelheads, but. They're doing corrosive damage. Corrosive damage is not uh, helped by steelhead. So um, until we see it, um, steelheads is lower on my list. I shouldn't have brought it up uh, right away. 
So sea serpents um, and Molotov maidens, yeah. good ones to start collecting. Yeah. And of course, devils and grease monkeys. For those that are lucky enough to roll them. Mm -hmm. And if you have a, uh, I've got one bullseye brigade left over from, I don't know if you can even still roll <clears> them. <throat> But that would shoot down every single missile except the halos in the entire target. Everything from the Alice is shot down. All the Sentinels are shot down. So maybe I put on a bull, Bullseye Brigade crew and go hard for an hour. Well, if you do, let us know if it still works. Yeah, I, I got nine left, so who knows? I have two. Uh, okay, how do the kit numbers work? Um, it's uh, um, for the regular ships, it's... Uh, 10. 10 30 60 and then for the uh the flag it's 10 40 80 and if if people have questions about oh. the the upgrade kits required there's a website you're going to want to check out that wayne runs a hoy me a hoy me arty you can google that battle pirates it will tell you how many kits you need for each ship when he gets around to updating it awesome thanks wayne Yeah, and both these numbers are for the uh, the normal zealot. the uh, The flag is ten forty eighty eighty. So, all right. Um, is there any more wrongs in the world that we need to solve tonight? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know, and and, and uh, Derpy, how did the uh, the wet t-shirt contest go? Well, we're uh, trying to decide on our winner right now. We're being evaluated by a panel of judges, so I'll have to uh, have to get back to you when I have the, the final results. We've got uh, three or four final contenders left. So, okay, all right. Well, you know, this is since last night. Most of the time, they 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 make they present the winners that night. But uh, I, I sort of like your approach, where you, you drag it out for a couple of days. That's, yeah. uh, do you have them do a second? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, wait. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> he, has, he has to like reevaluate. Uh, like, right, oh, you need okay. to do a second yeah. pass. And yeah, slow yeah. motion too, I bet. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's the way Derpy runs. So yeah, all good. I uh, run very quickly, not in slow motion. <laughs> you know, have four legs. <laughs> all righty. So um. If we don't have much else to cover, because I think we covered a lot tonight, uh, there's a link in case you want to join the after show, and um, and Bolus, uh, um, okay. YouTube YouTube chat probably doesn't let him share it unless you approve it from there. I don't. So let me see. Um, well, Mike could also do it, but. Uh, uh, there's nothing here that says to authorize or anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can so, put it in the comments on this uh, on this particular episode. So, alrighty. Well, um, yeah, I don't, really, I don't get anything to uh, approve at this point. So, uh, uh, why don't you all, uh, you know, good luck, and uh, I guess we'll see y'all on Wednesday. Um, and hopefully we've been informative in some way or fashion. And uh, see you all on uh, Wednesday, right before the raid. Have a good night, all. See ya. Good night. Take care. Good night. Good night.